What is up nerds, Hansi here and today we'll be making a display that displays the amount of subscribers that we have on our channel and the amount of followers we have on Facebook and on Instagram you know basically so we can so I can follow you guys to know when you guys come to your senses and decide to subscribe yeah I'm talking to you in today's project, we'll be using the infamous Raspberry Pi. And no, that's not a delicious treat, it's a mini computer. Things are going to get a little bit technical today, so let's see if you manage to play along. So let's grab the little computer and insert a memory card. This memory card contains an operating system. It's especially made for this Pi and it's based on Linux. I'm connecting a display and a keyboard so I can just go through the installation as fast as possible. The first thing we're gonna be doing is make a local small web application. This lets me see our subscribers in real time. But before that we need a Wi-Fi connection. So let's just connect to the Wi-Fi and write down our IP address. So the IP address basically lets us see our computer on the local network. And we can find the IP address by typing ifconfig in any terminal. I know it might sound complicated, but it really isn't. So back to our regular computer we can download a piece of software that's called PuTTY. Or PuTTY. Beauty. What? Anyway, open the program and we can type in our IP address. Pressing yes to the warning that appears, then using Pi as our username and Raspberry as a password. It is safe, original, and it's the same on all devices. Then type sudo apt-get install apache, which will basically install our entire web server. What? It can't be that simple. Yes, yes it is. Fine, so now we're gonna take our awesome Photoshop skills to create a background for the little web application. I was going to use our logo as the background, as if this video wasn't already narcissistic enough. Instead I went for a sort of grayish gradient. Okay, so let's import the YouTube logo and also the Facebook logo later and the Twitter logo as well. We're gonna create the text that shows how many subscribers or followers that we have, but we will not save this to the background image, as this text had to be updated by the code later on. Now we're gonna download another program. This one is called WinSCP, and it's made for transferring files from one location to another, and we're gonna use it to transfer the background to the Raspberry Pi. We connect with the IP address that we found and used before, and then we can just drag and drop files from one location to another, and now the background should be well in place on our Raspberry Pi. Back on the Raspberry Pi through PuTTY, we can locate the file and then move it to the web server folder, which is the following directory. We make sure that this is the only file located in this directory, and then we can load the web server using our IP address again. And now we should see a file with the same name as the background image. If we click on it, the background image will display. So to get the amount of subscribers and followers to update in real time, we need to have some code. Create a file called index.html, then we can write some simple HTML to get the background image to be our actual background image on this website. It's pretty basic stuff, and if you're already a web developer, you should probably just close your eyes for this part. The next thing we need to do is to create the actual text fields, which will contain the amount of subscribers and followers we have on the different platforms. To get the same look as we had in Photoshop, I'm going to use Google Fonts to get the font right. I'm just copying and pasting the HTML tag from their website. Using CSS, we can style it so that the fields are positioned right underneath the logos. Here is the JavaScript code that we must use to be able to get the real-time subscriber count. As usual, all the code links will be in the description. But please keep in mind that this code must only be used locally. If you put it online, somebody might steal your keys and eventually end up hacking you. The final thing that we have to do on the Raspberry Pi is to make sure that the Chromium browser starts whenever the Raspberry Pi is booted. We also want Chrome to start in kiosk mode, which makes it so that none of the toolbars are displaying. Guys, we're done with the coding and it's time to put the screen up on the wall. And I'm thinking that we can make like an MDF enclosure. It's a good placement, it's right next to my workbench so I can see it and I can hear it whenever I'm down here working. Okay guys, let's get building! So firstly I'm just gonna take apart this old music angel, which will be our loudspeakers. I'm gently gonna pry out the speaker elements, since we don't need the aluminium enclosure. Okay, so we're gonna take out the battery as well. Here it's important to use a tool with blunt edges, as we don't wanna puncture the battery, that can get really ugly. Using a soldering iron we can remove the wires from the circuit board that goes to the battery because we won't need a battery for this build. So we're gonna take a board of MDF and cut 4 thin slices of it so that we can assemble a frame later on. I've never worked with MDF before and I really like it, it's really soft and really easy to cut. So it's perfect for me because I don't have that much woodworking experience. 
now that we have four equal pieces, we can make a mark on two of the pieces, so we can cut them down to the proper length to give the box the desired height. To make sure all the corners are perfectly angled, I'm just using some hot glue to secure them in place, so in case something goes wrong I can just adjust it a little bit. When everything looks fine I use a nail gun to put some nails in the corners. This is really easy and it will hold it in place just fine. Using the rest of the MDF board, I'm cutting a surface just as big as the box, which will be the front panel. We can then put the monitor upside down on top of this panel and trace its shape with a pencil. Then, using the jigsaw, we can cut out the hole for the screen so it will fit perfectly in later on. Can't say I really enjoy using the jigsaw, to me it's really inaccurate and it's hard to get straight lines with it. But then again, I might just have a bad one. Time to get the speakers in place. So let's mark off where we want them. Then we can use the drill to cut a small hole first before we use a hole cutter bit. The hole cutter bit creates a nice and big hole for us to work on. And since MDF is so soft, I'll just be using a file to shape the hole so that it fits the speaker. So it's time to fasten the monitor to the display. We're gonna do this by using a crossbar made out of MDF and attach it to the bottom using the nail gun. Then using two slabs of MDF cut to the size of the indent on the back side of the screen, we can attach it to the crossbar and then drill four holes through it, which we later can push four screws through and fasten it to the screen. The screen is attached and the box is basically finished. We can start to position the electronics on the inside. I'm gonna fasten the speaker controller right to the back of the front and I'm gonna put the Raspberry Pi right next to it. To make the Raspberry Pi stay in place, I'm gonna drill four holes and then put four spacer screws on the inside of it. And then we can just use regular screws to stick the Raspberry Pi to the spacer screws. And this is how it looks when the HDMI cable and the audio cable is connected to the front panel. So we're gonna use a rotary tool to drill a little indent on the edge of the box, so we'll be able to take a cable through it. I'm gonna put an extension cord on the inside, so I only have to use one cable to get the power. Having that done, we're basically done, and we can start painting it. So I was going for a red color on this to match our logo, or even the YouTube logo. Turns out I didn't have enough red, and yeah, it turned out pretty pink. Luckily I bought an airbrush for our Game Boy modding, so I'm just gonna fill it up with red color and paint it that way. And actually that turned out to be the best way to paint this. It was very fast and it didn't use much paint either. To be able to stick this to the wall, I made a double layer of MDF right at the corner. And then I used some metal angle brackets and used some small screws to drill them in place. Putting it up on the wall was certainly a two-man job, but I managed somehow. Took some extra time though. The most difficult part was actually to put on the front panel. I had to hold it up while putting the cables into the Raspberry Pi and then stick it to the box without having any of the cables being stuck between the front panel and the rest of the box. Okay, so before we check that out, I just want to say this was supposed to be our 10k subscriber special. Right now we're on 18k, so I um, guess that's a little bit late. Maybe this can be like the 20k special or... 19k special, 18k I think, 18k special. Anyway, it'll be fun to start using it. I'll be looking forward to be able to sit here and hear whenever there's a new subscriber or follower on Facebook or on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe so I can hear you on the panel. If you decide to support us on Patreon, all the money that you put into it will go directly to fund our projects and yeah. Full disclosure on what we buy with our Patreon money. So, please, if you like the video, consider it. So, uh, let's check it out. Let's see if this thing works. Oh man, these lights are so bright.